Good afternoon, everyone. I'd like to call this meeting to order. Jennifer, can we have a roll call, please? Mm -hmm. Commissioner O'Rourke? Here. Commissioner Ross? Here. Commissioner Algar? Here. Let's all stand for a pledge of allegiance in a moment of silence. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Is there an agenda for this? Yes, ma'am. How did you get it? Uh, is there a paper copy? You gotta, you gotta be on the board to get this. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So we do have an agenda. Do I have any uh, late additions or any deletions? I don't think so. Motion to approve as submitted. Support. Uh, all in favor say aye. 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 Motion carried. We have an agenda. Um, we are now ready for public comments. We have a three minute um, allocation for public comment in the beginning of our meeting. And at the end of the meeting, we have a five minute segment. Okay. Oh. No, Annette. Okay, thank you so much. Well, maybe we'll hear from you at the end. Let's move on to then to the um, commissioner comment. Commissioner Elgar? Nope. Nope. Work? Nothing? Nothing from me. Okay, action items. Number one, our 2024 non union wage scale. And uh, that looks like here. Ms. Ms. I'm going to ask Darcy. To come up, yeah, and there was some minor changes from what we looked at on the uh, on the budget. sixth. There's a very minor changes. So the one in your packet is the most. Yeah. Let me go through those real quickly. Thank you. And just to, if I may, just before you get started, I do want to let everyone know that um, Darcy and Kathy and I sat together on Friday and went through these numbers and made sure that um, actually was it Friday? It was Wednesday because you weren't here Friday. So on Wednesday, we went through and made sure that we were all copacetic on what the numbers were. So, and I did ask her to take a look at that and if she had any comments or questions to come in and let us know. But I think at this point, we're on the same page. Excellent. So a few minor changes. with the, um, the second one down executive assistance. The first, uh, first scale you saw last week didn't have depth. So it didn't have the start, start uh, the one year, the two year, the three year, or the four year rate. We've added those in with the understanding that we realize we may not hire, we may not find that person who should be working at that highest rate. Um, a lot of the changes were moving people around. So we now broke the, the not any wage schedule into um, like support positions, I guess, I just general positions in the non union group. The second part is the non man, or excuse me, the mandated, your contracted employees, your elected officials. And then the bottom is your court employee. Uh, the question came up of why the probate family judge, which highlighted yellow. Um, that's kind of a tickler for me to remember to look because those rates are set by the state. So I have to keep an eye out for when that gets published. Just a nice little reminder that jumped out at me. Are there any questions about this? Okay, so you're just saying that this is proposed per this is the non-union 2024 proposed wage schedule based on the three and a quarter percent that was given to all the other employees okay and um and then just reorganized okay so this is actually was in your budget book it was an addendum in the back so there's just the minor updates to that so there's not anything structural that has been changed and and these numbers were in the budget so um, in essence they have been approved because they were approved in the budget and my understanding from our meeting on the sixth that there might be some reason that we do need to approve them or bring them forward to the they were not board. approved in 2023 it they had been approved previously but in last I'm sorry in 2022 Two. but for the 2023 budget 
they they had not been um, adopted or approved beyond what the budget book stated. So so you're saying there is no action to be well, taken I would like with this. To recommend this um, I would like to take this to the special session at the end of the year for approval. It's just yeah. So you're having you're getting it on the agenda. Okay. So since that's all been approved, why does it need to be approved? You approve the staffing levels. So, okay. for example, you approved um, the human resource director at the two year, but the rest of that scale was not approved. Okay. Sir, I'll just but there's 100% assurance that these numbers are in line with our budget that was approved. That's, the, yes. I think, the important key thing. Hey, uh, after they added the 3.25 tool. Yeah. All right. The one other difference you will see here is the IT technician position has been removed from the scale. Oh, yeah. We are going with the IT director. We no longer have an IT technician. Okay. Yeah. So do we need to make this a motion to move it to special session or not? I, I think it would be wise to do that, just to say that the personnel We've, committee has reviewed it and is making this as a recommendation to the board to, for approval. So moved. Support. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. So we'll see that on the 29th, is that? You're referring to that special session meeting? Okay. Great. Thank you, Darcy. Next, we are moving on to the... Um, Hiring update, and I bet that's coming from you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. <laughs> so in regards to um, the two positions that are listed, um, the planning director, um, we had interviews last week with two, um, two candidates, and based on the feedback that um, was received from the chair, the chairs that um, respectively work with the planning you know, director, um, which was the intent. We don't typically... Um, we don't typically have board members or committee members sit in on interviews. I mean, there certainly is that opportunity because they have valuable input. But um, from the de decision-making perspective, we don't typically do that. However, I thought it was important in light of the change and significant change of the director being a 30-year employee or 20-plus anyhow. And um, so out of those discussions came the reality that there is still some restructuring that needs to happen. Um, with Laurel's departure, there are issues with the planning, uh, with the Parks and Rec, rather, and then so and then there's going to be some other staffing issues. If we were to elevate the senior planning director, then we would have another staffing issue. So we thought we needed a little bit more time to look through this, um, but everyone felt very confident moving forward with the decision to make the current senior planning director the interim planner and move forward with planning ironically, um, to look at all these other staff scenarios and how they'll all interplay. So at this point, um, the position of interim planning director has been offered and accepted um, by Gail Meyer. And so we'll be moving forward now, crafting a plan on how we now structure um, and what it potentially other positions we may need based on some upcoming requests for grants and other things. So it allows us to have a little bit more discussion about how we move forward. How long, how long has Gail been working? There? Gail has been with us for uh, at least five years. Okay. And she will assume um, the finance direct or the planning directors or she will continue at her current rate of pay? Nope. She okay. will now be moved to the um, an interim, which is the lowest level okay. of the planning director position okay. and between I should say entry level how's that okay between right. she and Miss Herman they're they're the planning department right correct so, so we're probably not going to sit on Jenny. this for too long are we no that's not the in fact as soon as the board meeting is over and we have some time we're going to start some brainstorming so we can bring those things back to the board as quickly as possible yeah because who is going to do her job? Those are some of the things that Gail has already has some ideas about and has already started some discussions about, and we agreed we would sit later this week and talk about those things. Okay. So, so you have a committee or a group of people that are sufficient? You know, any need? No, I think Gail and I can start the discussion with that. Trudy has obviously offered also to kind of weigh in a little bit, and so we're just trying to see 
what what options we currently have, what things are urgent. We have an EPA grant for a grant writer that is in the works right now. We'll know that, you know, probably middle of January. So there's a lot of plates spinning, and until we really know kind of what direction we're going, um, we'll we'll try to get a craft a, again a plan for discussion. Okay. So any other questions about the planning department head position? Sounds good. Move it. So would, do we need to talk about the IT director position? Well, and similarly, mm -hmm. um, the IT director position was offered to our IT technician, um, Leanna, um, and she accepted, and that position will start January 1st. Good. And the conversations with uh, SafetyNet are still ongoing to nail in that savings that they're offering? Mm -hmm. Yep, that was actually that was confirmed and uh, will be presented as part of their proposal for 2024, but they did agree for the 2024 year to reduce their fee for staff by, I believe it was 1100 it was either 1100 or 1300 which will then offset the increase um, that was offered to the IT director. 1100 a month for the contract. It was eleven thousand, wasn't it? No, I think it was eleven $1 hundred a month. A month. Oh, wow. So it's a little bit more than like that thirteen. Yeah. Thirteen thousand. Yeah. <clears throat> we made money on that one. Okay. And I think everyone's happy. Leanna's gonna stay. Excellent. Now, do we need any more approvals for that change? Because I thought we were all done. Okay. We are done for both of those two positions. Okay. Good. Good. Excellent. Thank you so much. Um, let's move on then to it action item number three, which is the executive assistant slash FOIA coordinator position. And that's so we we were very fortunate um, that we had found um, another one of those amazing unicorns that had um, skill sets that were um, unique, obviously, that had both administrative skills um, and board skills and also happened to be a paralegal. Um, unfortunately, on Friday when I spoke to the individual about the position, she said she was not able to wait any longer for these discussions and that she was offered another position. And so the question um, about blending that position is now off the table. So it's a, it's a mute point. I know we had had some discussions with the union and other things, but um, so you will be seeing um, in your packet, um, the board or this group did look at the job description for a FOIA coordinator, and it was brought before the board last week, mm -hmm. and so that will be moved forward um, tomorrow night for approval. Separate, separate FOIA coordinator. So we're not able to move forward and even post the position until we have a job description. We <coughs> do have a job description for the executive um, assistant. We have several applications. We're going back now. And vetting those, unfortunately, there aren't very many of them that have board experience and putting together board packets. So that's one of the challenges that we have. Um, we may need to look at, you know, do we have to expand that scope a little bit um, in terms of, you know, reposting? Um, so that's something I'm going to have to look at. But there, um, the one candidate we had was just kind of so great that. Even Laurel and Joe said it in the interviews, it was like this would be awesome, but it wasn't meant to be. So we're moving forward in a different direction. And remind us again, Laurel's last official day in the building is, is the 29th of December. Mm -hmm. And then we are making arrangements right now where temporary office assistant, someone that has had experience um, but is retired that um, helps out on some of the other boards and commissions. I mean, for example, the individual we're talking with, Lori, is a temporary office assistant, and she helps out with Parks and Rec. No so, firm answer um, if that's going to um, work. Or haven't connected yet. Darcy was out yes, or on Thursday and Friday, and so we'll be making some of those follow-up calls today. So um, that job description set, you're going to go ahead with that. But this FOIA coordinated position is on our for our agenda Later. tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Correct. So we've already we've already dealt with this, correct? Yeah. Okay. Okay. And just a reminder that uh, that job description um, has been approved, has been reviewed and okay by the legal. Oh. And by legal or whatever. Okay. So does that pretty much sum up where we're at and 
not too much panic yet. <laughs> so sorry. Any other questions about that? No. Okay. Number four is our administrator. We are looking at uh, reviewing a job description, which is further down in our packet, I believe. Yep, there it is. Yeah, the one, the one thing that you have to keep in mind with your administrator is she is a contracted employee. Mm -hmm. And when you change your job description, you're in effect breaking that contract. Breaking the contract. So I just wanted to bring this to you to make you aware of that <coughs> going forward. That um, mm -hmm. if you make changes, you you really need to work through that contract with the administrator. Um, did you have anything to present on that? No, I wasn't sure why it had been requested. So I, so for the committee, so just to be able to show you what you have in front of you, and it's a collection of different things. It's that document. It's the contract. It's um, the budget rules, the board rules, the the act that was recently approved. Um, so there's a variety of different documents that all kind of put in there. But at its core, um, the administrator. Um, currently is responsible, according to the job description and what I was hired in at, for both finance and for um, HR, um, as well as general duties of the board. Um, so, but we know that there's some discussions that are happening right now in regards to that finance piece. I, I may have been part of that, why it was brought up. And <clears throat> the way I see it, going back to my old township, the supervisor is in charge of the shingles and the grass on the ground. He or she should, as as you are, Ms. Allen, you, every question we asked today, you brought it right back to us. It was, uh, you're definitely on top of everything. To be on top of everything, you have to, you have to at least try to get to every meeting, and I know you can't. I, I know you can't, and some meetings, uh, you can just read the, read the minutes, but, uh, you know, that's up to you to decide which ones you want to go to, but any of them, even the hiring process, my opinion is, if I need something, the first person I'm going to is you. So you should attend whatever you think is necessary. Thank you. Which I believe this particular contract job description does cover that, doesn't it? I mean, so we, well, well, wasn't the issue was that you were asked to switch to Sydney? I wasn't here for that conversation because I was down prepping for the presentation last week, but I understand that was mentioned. And um, so is that what brought this? I think that's what I think it might have. Yeah, I, yeah. I probably yeah. took it personal and got upset, so you know, I'm sorry. It also kind of came about in the discussion of um, the hiring process because that question came up. Okay. So if you look at the next document, I gave you an overview of <clears throat> who is responsible in what way for the hiring process. So there's no action item on this, correct, either? There is no action okay. item. Okay. Any other specific questions about this job description for our administrator? So if there's no question if she wants to sit in on a job interview, she can. <laughs> well, maybe we need to read the next document, right? Is that what you're leading us up to um, that talks about delegating the role of Hiring, right? Overview of hiring process right. slash clarification of roles. Done deal. Thank you. Can we can we look at that and then if we need to go back I, to I, that? I think that's pretty self-explanatory. Right there. Did you just put this together? Okay. All right. Yeah, I didn't see the. So there what this put it together from the contract or? Uh, no, just from general practice. Um, the board's role is your role is to set the staffing levels to set the salaries that type of stuff. Um, and then from there, the administrator has the responsibility of hiring the employees that work here. Unless it's an elected official, that elected official has the right to hire their own staff. So I just wanted you to have a clear understanding of the role each level has. So this would have to be approved. This would have to be approved by the board. It already is by I mean, statute. I don't see any big deal with I don't, it. I can't see it. <laughs> but if it's a new document, <clears throat> it's more just an informational piece for you. Yeah, it's just an overview of what current practices and our guidelines are. Yep. I, my gut feeling as I'm reading this, though, is that if this was just put together, 
by you, Darcy, last week, and thank you. And then we didn't have anything in our policy. Maybe this is something that could be added to our organizational meeting in January as a board after we get some information from the MLI uh, study too. Um, I, I would love to see this <laughs> on the agenda. And maybe, I mean, this is pretty simple. It's a one-page document. It's a one-page document, and I think we could be a little more specific. And I think, I think I I would feel more comfortable. And I'm looking at it from a new um, commissioner, um, so that I clearly understand the roles too, and that maybe we have some discussion, and then, you know, maybe it might help things. Everybody is on the same page. Put it that way. So can can I? Um, do I need to make a motion? or ask for your approval, guys. Do you guys want to put it on the agenda I think for we already our- already did support and I she seconded it. Okay. I think it needs to be reviewed by everybody. Yeah. So yeah. send it out and then- Organizational. One, one thing I would add in, now that I'm looking at this, is the board does have a responsibility of hiring the administrator. That is the one employee that you are responsible for. That's correct. Oh, and that's not on there. Right. So yeah, that's good. Yeah, that'd be Except great. Except for the good. chief financial officer right now. Right. We are responsible for that. I don't think you need a recommendation. You would just put it on the organizational. It would be normally this committee um, recommends to the executive. Okay. So if you wanted to go on the organizational, that would be between Administrator Allen and whoever's in the agenda up for the organizational. If that's where they want that, to place. That will be before well, our next Otherwise, meeting. it would be exec you would be recommending this to the executive mm -hmm. for January. Or the organizational. Oh. Is it the same thing? I'd have to check with the board, no, but those no, are the two different. Mm -hmm. is a, a totally different mm -hmm. meeting. Okay. Correct? And I'm looking out the audience. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's true. Well, is this something that you would want to cover at the organizational? I, I, I'm not a member of the public here. Right. We will take it under advisement with the chair. Thank you. I, I really strongly feel it's an organizational component, and I think it'd be good to actually go into that meeting before we took it to executive. That's just my feeling. Give us a little more time to have that document and add to it and change it um, and get feedback from class of staff. So, yeah. Sometimes it's permissible to see public comments. comments. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. I, I agree. Just know that, I mean, I'm just speaking from my own experience. You're new. This is new. This <clears throat> personnel committee is new. I'm not sure if you can make recommendations organizational. I can certainly check with the county clerk. Okay. I'll take care of it, Jen. Thank you. Yeah, a committee does it to the executive, and then the executive to the regular board. Right. Okay. Yeah. I'll just put my notes that Dad said she'll take care of it. <laughs> Sounds good. <laughs> so any other discussion about um, this uh, clarification of roles at this point, other than we're all going to do our homework and come to the next meeting where we'll discuss it. But thank you for putting that together. We have a revised copy by then. Darcy, yeah. Um, so according to our agenda, we're just moving right along. Um, we do have item number six is review of the 2024 legal holidays. And um, somebody received a, a request from an employee, correct? Yes, that's what we came from. It was the clerk, um, the was deputy clerk for the court. I'm trying to think, it was Trina, right? Yeah, it was brought to our attention that. Juneteenth is now been recognized as a federal and a state holiday. Um, something for you to be aware of. Um, yeah, I don't see how we can't make it a holiday here when it's a state and federal holiday. It's been recognized by both the president and the governor. the governor. And when was that done? Was that just in the last year? So we're not right too much behind the ball. I want to say it was in October. Right it was. It was June 19th. <laughs> I think the president did it and then the governor confirmed it. She did it recently. And then she did it in June. The okay. governor did. Okay. So, and is there any reason to check with other counties or anything else? Or is this just pretty much our practice once it's a federal and a state that we accept it or offer it as a proposal? This is just something I was, I was really aware of. <clears throat> 
do have union contracts that cross over the holiday. I would move that we that we propose to the executive board that this be added as one of our holidays. Support. Um, discussion. We can talk about it then. Yeah. Well, I guess I, I guess I would like to know maybe a little bit more about another holiday that went along this path, um, just for historical perspective. Um, I vaguely remember something about a date being changed from one month to another month. We used to have something off, I, I, but I'm, I'd love to get clarification on kind of like the past history, if we have anything. I know I've been here for 15 years, and this hasn't changed. This hasn't changed in 15 years? I don't think hmm. we've really had any other federal. Um, maybe it was within the conservation district that I'm confused. I don't. I'm not trying to remember when Martin Luther King Day was approved officially. Yeah. So that would have been probably the most recent one. And it would be of interest to you to know what other of the local counties do. No, it's a federal holiday and a state holiday. I don't see how we can tell our people too bad. No, it says right here is recognized as a state holiday in Michigan by. And I, and, I did get and I did get personally uh, some, someone different than Europe referring to asking me for it too. So, um, yeah, the employees are asking for it. So, so can I call the vote? No, I get motion. to call the vote. No, you have a motion. You supported <laughs> it. All in favor? Aye. Aye. So moved. So we'll bring this to our next executive committee meeting in January. Correct. Thank you. <clears throat> Pretty simple. I should have asked before we started if anyone had to run out. This is now we have, we're like in great shape, so no problem at all. Well, this was short, but we we did not have time to cover these things. In no, the last no. Week. Well, so everything was from the last thing that we'll have to revisit when we come back in January. And we'll be setting those dates when. Um, I believe the discussion was that they would be looked at at organizational organizational meetings. We don't need to look at our calendars right now to find a date. I think it might be best to wait to that organizational meeting because we're going to be trying to coordinate several different that's true. That's true. Um, committee meetings. So might and trying to fit them in before executives. So that time frame between a board meeting and then the next yeah. executive. Understood. Thank you. Thank you, Darcy. Um, we are now up to public comment. This is a five minute Time period if anyone would like to address this committee. Wow. We were so succinct and riveting. And <laughs> riveting. If there is no public comment, is there a commissioner that has a comment to share? Thank you all for coming. Yeah, thanks for coming and caring about our personnel committee. Appreciate the support. Okay, can I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Thank you.